Hello and welcome to our next video within the Foundations in Audit part of ACCA's FIA qualification. Um, this video, just like all the others, is based on the Express Notes. We're in the last chapter of the Express Notes. Um, you can always download them from the website www.theexpgroup.com. As I said, we are in the last chapter and this video will be about the auditor's report. That's a culmination of all the work on the audit. This is where the auditor will provide this opinion that we had been discussing from the very beginning. This is where the auditor will say whether the financial statements provide a true and fair view of the company or they do not provide that true and fair view. Now, what constitutes that report? You've got it listed here. First, it's the title so that nobody gets it wrong. It is the auditor's report. Uh, then there is the address C, so for whom this report is aimed or for whom is it written. And the address C, always remember, is the shareholders of the company. Even though the auditor's report is usually a publicly available document, it's sent to the registry, um, sometimes it's on the, on the company's website, uh, it doesn't matter. In reality, it was written to the shareholders and the auditor's responsibility is to shareholders only. So the addressee of the opinion is always the shareholders. Then there is an introductory paragraph which says we audited the financial statements it identifies the financial statements so basically for which year um, then the statement of responsibilities of the management we remember from our previous videos that the managers are responsible for the preparation of financial statements in accordance with the relevant accounting framework and then the statement of responsibilities of the auditors the auditors are responsible for issuing the opinion on those financial statements why do these two go into the auditor's report? Again, to bridge the expectations gap. So that it's clear to anyone who reads the auditor's report that the managers were responsible for doing some part of the work while the auditors were responsible for something completely different. Um, then the scope paragraph which says what the auditor did, that the auditor did it on a test basis, that the auditor provides reasonable assurance. And um, then probably the most interesting bit of auditor's report, the opinion paragraph, where the auditor says whether the financial statements do provide Trend fair view or not. Finally, three details the signature, the date, and basically the auditor's address so the, that the auditor can be easily identified. Now, this is the technical content of the auditor's uh, report, but now let's discuss what goes into the report in terms of the opinion and in which cases. First, we will discuss something that all the companies would wish to get, unmodified reports. Uh, unmodified report is when the auditor can safely say that the financial statements show true and fair view. So all the transactions were properly recorded, they were all, all reported in accordance with relevant accounting standards, for example, IFRS. If after the audit it comes out that everything was as expected, the managers did their job the way they should have, then the opinion will say the financial statements present fairly in all material respects. This will always go there because obviously the, the auditors only verified material items or verified financial statements for potential material misstatements. 
Um, this is the standard line that will go there. In the majority of cases, this is how the audit ends. However, sometimes it doesn't go that easy. First, we will talk about still an unmodified report, but one in which the auditor decides to put an explanatory paragraph. It's still not a modification. The opinion says the financial statements are still true and fair. So the opinion paragraph is exactly the same. However, another paragraph follows which describes something that is actually disclosed in the financial statements, but the auditor thinks it's so important that they want to mention it in the report. Remember the first condition, the ultimate condition for giving a clean, unmodified report with an explanatory paragraph is that the issue that the auditor wants to refer to was properly disclosed in the financial statements. All right, because the emphasis of matter paragraph says we draw your attention to note X. It always starts like this, so there must be a note that describes the problem. And uh, when would it happen that an emphasis of matter paragraph is um, issued? The majority of cases is significant uncertainty And outside 80% of cases of that significant uncertainty relates to going concern. So when there is significant uncertainty about the ability of the company to continue as going concern, and it was properly described in the notes, the financial statements, then the uh, there will be an unmodified report with an emphasis of matter. This is it for the good opinions, for the unmodified reports with clean opinions. Now we move to modified reports with qualifications. The opinion now will be qualified. Qualification may happen due to one of two reasons. A. The auditor may have a disagreement with the management. So, for example, the management refuses to depreciate non-current assets. And the auditor says, well, you know, that's what the standards say. IS-16, property plan equipment, non-current assets or property plan equipment must be depreciated. So there is a disagreement. If the management do not want to put the adjustment in the financial statements and the auditor concludes the adjustment is material, then then the financial statements will be, uh, the, the, the opinion to the financial statements will be qualified. Qualified opinion, well, first of all, starts from the explanation. And then the opinion goes to say the financial statements show trend fair view except for the effect of the problem described above. So if the auditor concludes there is a disagreement and it has a material impact, there will be an except for opinion. So in our case, it would be like depreciation was not charged and therefore property plan equipment is misstated and some item of expenses is also um, misstated. Sometimes the disagreement is so big or there is so many disagreements that the adjustments that were not made by the management are pervasive. They're not only material, they are pervasive. Their impact spreads throughout all the financial statements. It's not just property, plant, equipment and one item of expenses. It's a number of items in the balance sheet and a number of items in the income statement. And then 
the auditor issues an adverse opinion, which says, basically, the financial statements do not present fairly or do not give a true and fair view of the financial position of the company. That's an adverse opinion, extreme case of disagreement with management. The second reason for a qualified opinion is the limitation on scope. So if the auditor is not capable of performing all the procedures that they would want to, then effectively they did not test something. They couldn't test something. This could be because the client wouldn't allow for this, or this could be for objective reasons, because like the, the most obvious of them is when they are appointed after the stock take, and therefore they couldn't possibly take part in the stock take. So if there is a limitation on scope, the auditor effectively did not verify some items in, uh, in the financial statements, Again, except for opinion will be given. And again, except for the possible effect, because now the auditor did not do their procedures. The auditor does not say they were wrong. The auditor doesn't know because they haven't checked that. All right, so except for the possible effect, the financial statements present fairly in all material respects. Sometimes the limitation on scope, however, will be so pervasive that effectively the auditor did not check so much that they couldn't conclude on the financial statements. And then they will issue the disclaimer of opinion in which the auditor will say, we have not been able to obtain evidence to provide the opinion and therefore we do not express the opinion. Again, that's an extreme case of limitation on scope, right? where so much work couldn't have been done that the auditor is unable to issue the opinion. To summarize it all within a graph, you've got it here on the last page, the opinion can be clean, as here, or qualified. When it's clean, it can be just a standard opinion with absolutely no mentioning of anything else, just saying true and fair view, end of story. Alternatively, if there is some significant uncertainty, there will be an emphasis of matter paragraph. But it's still clean, it's still good. The bad ones are here. And this may be due to the disagreement with management or limitation on scope. If the disagreement is material, it ends up with an except for. If the disagreement with management is pervasive, it's an adverse opinion. And again, if limitation of scope is material, except for, if it's pervasive, it ends up with a disclaimer. All right. Thank you very much for your attention.